Hey, it's Aaron. Today I'm sitting in a 2020 Mitsubishi Outlander. This is the PHEV, so the plug-in hybrid version. This is in the GTS all-wheel control ver option. Uh, so this has all-wheel drive, which is actually electric in this. So there, instead of a physical drive shaft, it's electric. And uh, it's the GT model, so it's it's a little bit of an upgrade, nicer interior, a few other things. Details on this, the standard price for the uh, plug-in hybrid is somewhere, I'm trying to remember what the number is. It's in the high 30s, but I can't remember the exact number. Now for this particular model, uh, the MSRP starts at 41.5, so it's $41,500. Then a couple of upgrades for this uh, boosts it to 43600 with delivery. So one of those add-ons is delivery. Quick rundown, the paint is a $400 option. The uh, GT Premium Interior Package, that's uh, also $400. Then the uh, floor mat add-ons are $145. The special storage bag for the charging cable is 70 bucks and then you have a thousand dollars for shipping uh, and delivery and that's the gist of it so you're spending for this i would be spending over almost forty four thousand dollars we're spending forty three thousand six hundred bucks honest i don't feel like i'm getting that i've got hard plastics it's a little bit loud uh, it doesn't drive terribly special. It's not horrible. It just doesn't drive special. You know, if you're going to put a GT badge on something, it really should be a sport model. Uh, just a, uh, it, it feels cheaper than that price tag. Upsides, I really like the seating. I really do like the, uh, the drive quality for the electrics, especially. You know, it's not quick. I that's not what I'm expecting. Uh, it's efficient and very, very good at it and never feels uh, like it can't do something. It's always confident. So I like that. That's always a good thing in a vehicle. Makes you feel safer when the vehicle feels confident. Um, all electric range in this is not quite 25 miles. It's about 23 or 24. Uh, and if you're driving in a city, you can use all of those miles uh, before you use before the engine ever turns over. Uh, the engine doesn't have to, does have to turn on to run like air conditioning and things. Uh, but for most people, uh, I, I took the kids, uh, to go, to go, uh, somewhere here in town for an appointment, had the kids in the back seat. We're driving along. We left the house. We drove, we came, we got there. And then we came back when we were done. It was about 14 miles. Engine didn't run one time. That's the sort of efficiency you want out of a plug-in. That's the point of having it. So that's really good. Uh, all electric will run it to somewhere up in the area of 40 miles per hour. So somewhere around there, you're going to have the engine kick in. Uh, the engine will also kick in if you're really pressing it. So if you're trying to hurry to get on the freeway or do something else, the engine uh, will kick on automatically to give you more power for that. So that's kind of the gist of that. It, it feels good, it drives well, but I don't feel like I'm getting $44,000 worth of vehicle out of this. I like the, the cargo, the cargo's nice and big and useful, but it does not have a five row option for the plug-in. Uh, it's two rows only. The back seat is roomy and awesome. Lots of headroom, lots of seating space. I was sitting back there with this seat adjusted for me no issues whatsoever with knees or uh, anything else. So that's nicely done. Lots of room in this vehicle. Fuel efficiency is off the charts. Really good fuel efficiency. So the government says 74 miles per gallon equivalent. Uh, it's rated at 25 MPG. So that's the, if you're only using the, uh, the gas engine, uh, it will use four gallons for every hundred miles. That's their rough estimate. So my uh, experience doing a freeway run was you will get somewhere in the neighborhood of maybe 37. So that, that will be your freeway mileage. Uh, and that's really good. Okay. So you have to take into account some of that. I wasn't pushing it hard to go up the on-ramp. Uh, some of that going from the fuel station to the, actually getting on the freeway 
that was electric, and then once on the freeway, uh, the engine is doing most of the work, but you still have some electric boosting. And then coming off the freeway, you gain some back slowing down. Uh, so very efficient for a hybrid. Uh, uh, nice, nicely done there. I think everything in this has been a mixed experience. I really do like it. I just don't forty. <laughs> well, I just don't forty-four thousand dollars like it. Uh, I feel like I can get a much better interior, much nicer uh, accoutrement, more infotainment. There's hardly anything on this infotainment. I get a lot more infotainment, a lot of other things, if I were to go to uh, another vehicle instead of this. Uh, but as far as plugins go in this particular genre, there really aren't very many in this segment. There aren't a lot to choose from. This is one of the better ones, I think. Uh, without going into luxury realms. So, nicely done for Mitsubishi. I expect the Outlander is going to get a, a serious upgrade sometime in the next year or so. It's just due for that. And uh, now that Mitsubishi has, has a little more clout because they've got some uh, Nissan partnerships happening, then maybe we'll see better. So, we'll see. But, there you go. That's what I got with the uh, 2020 Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV. Nicely done.